All right, so we are talking about, and just to speak into that in part 17, we're talking about casting out devils. Then we came into uh, speaking with new tongues. I'm not going to go over that again. We are talking about the power of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. If you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit, I encourage everybody in this room, everybody watching me, to be baptized into the Holy Ghost. You say, what is the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Well, the evidence is tongues. It's tongues. But really, the evidence of being baptized in the Holy Ghost is a changed life. You go from a nominal Christian to on fire. In fact, you go from nominal to a f Jesus freak. Somebody help me. Uh, that's all I call it. It's a Jesus freak. What do you mean? What's a Jesus freak? Talk about Jesus all the time. Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the afternoon, Jesus at night. You know, you're carrying your Bible around. You know, you're one of those kind of people. Why? You're just hungry for God, and the Holy Spirit makes you hungry. Why is that? Because the same Spirit that rose Jesus from the dead now dwells inside of you, and not only inside of you, but upon you, and it flows out of you. So you have that life cycle moving in you, that energy, that power of God, and, and the church is missing it because you can tell when you go into a nominal, boring church, there's no life. Why? Because they're dead men's bones. I mean, they're ringing in the sheaves, you know, whatever. You know, Grandma's got a tamarind out, but, but, but there's nothing happening. Does that make sense? And their life is the same when the door's shut and lights are off and they go home. But somebody's been baptized in the Holy Spirit, there's a difference in your life. There's a difference in your prayer. There's more intimacy. There's more passion. There's more power. There's more pursuit. Global missions is a part of your heart. In other words, it just makes your Christianity more alive. So we talked about that, but the evidence of that is praying in the Holy Ghost. It's, it's an unknown tongue. So we're not going to go back over that. It is absolutely a weapon. If you don't pray in the Holy Spirit every day, I, I, you, 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 you're, you're defeated. Let me try that again. You're usually defeated because without praying in the Holy Ghost, for me personally, I would, I, would, I would be defeated. I need the power of the Holy Spirit. I need to get away from people and just pray in the Holy Ghost and just seek God and say, Lord, help me because I don't know what I'm doing. Somebody help me. I guess you do, but I don't always know what I'm doing, and I need the help of the Holy Spirit. So that was just a little recap there. We're in Part 18. We are talking about, uh, uh, again, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we were all over the place, Acts 2, 4, 10, 44 through 48, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 14, and we're just going to leave that right there. Then we went into taking up serpents. How many remember that? That's when I lost about half the people. They left. But uh, uh, again, taking up serpents, we don't have to go back there, but Mark chapter 16, Luke 10, 19. But I am going to go back to Psalms 91 in a minute. But So taking serpents, taking up serpents, what does that mean? No, it doesn't mean taking rattlesnakes or cotton mouths or anything like that. It means coming against the devil, coming against demon powers, coming against entities and, and strongholds. God gave us the power through Jesus Christ to, to, to defeat the enemy, to show Jesus' total victory and that's one way you show the victory of Christ and the resurrection is by casting a devil out. Come on, because everywhere Jesus went, devils freaked out. They, they, they panicked. They, they said, you know, have you come to torment us before our time? Yeah, kind of. Get out, you know, and these different things. So when we're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, we're walking in the goodness and the glory of God that is one of the signs of the end time church, really the church today, but end time church, is to cast out devils. We're not going to sit there and counsel them out. We're going to cast them out. Now, don't get me wrong. There's times when you do counsel and you talk to people and, and there's things that are, that are going on in their life that may be spiritually uh, imposing or spiritually oppressing them. And it's not de necessarily a devil. Do you get what I'm saying? Not internal. But there are times when there are people that are carrying a devil cast it out <laughs> cast that thing out but you don't find that much in churches anymore and, and then they'll say well i don't want to be a deliverance ministry everybody's in the deliverance ministry we're all called to be deliverance ministers the truth you don't need to be ordained you don't need to have a long beard and a robe 
<laughs> and your eyes going back to your head when you pray. You don't have to do that. You just be normal you, full of the Spirit of God. Grab a hold of somebody. Of course, you know, you got permission to pray with them. And then cast that thing. <laughs> I want to, I want to, Tony, I want to make sure you know, you know, make sure you, would you sign this before I break your arm? No. I mean, I want to pray with you and then to cast that thing out. Is that right? Now listen, there'll be times too when the power of God is moving so strong that that devil will go ahead and help you and he'll announce his presence. He'll just manifest. He'll contort, he'll do the thing or whatever's happening in that person's life. So, so we have to cast out devils. And, and the church today is afraid of devils. In fact, there's people getting nervous right now because you're talking about the devil. Uh, we, talking about the devil doesn't stir him up. He's already stirred up. In fact, there's coming a day very soon where he will be so full of anger because he's been cast down, and his time is very short. And he th still thinks, because he has a brain injury, that he is going to destroy God and raise up above him and become the king of all kings and blah, blah, blah. That's not going to happen. So part of the Christian's walk is to show the authority and the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ by casting out devils. I really want to emphasize that one more time because we so much, again, put the spotlight up on the guy or the girl, and that is completely an error. That is wrong because it is in you. This, I don't get nothing extra. I get an anointing. I get a calling, and, and there's different things that God does for a fivefold minister. But same power rose Jesus from the dead is on you and in you. You. I mean, point a finger at your, your neighbor. You've been wanting to point on, point at him. Say you. You talk about. We don't know our identity. We've had identity theft in the church, and we've allowed the world to tell us who we are, and social media to tell us who we are, and fake plastic preachers to tell us who we are. No, no, you got to go back to the Word. You are God's chosen. You're the ecclesia. You're the called out ones. Come on now. You're awesome. You're awesome. And you say, yeah, that's me. He's talking about me. Oh, well, that's prideful. That's not prideful. Your boasting is in Jesus because you're nothing without him. Okay? So cast out devils. Now I want to go back to Psalms 91 uh, because we were there. We didn't finish it. So this is going to be part of 18. But I want to go, if you don't mind, I want to go to, because um, I was talking about being immune from poisons. So that, that's actually going to be part of 19. So we're going to start there. But I want to read it to you in the Amplified. Is that okay? We got it up here on the Amplified tonight because you just got to see what this is saying. So in part 19, which we're going back to, talking about uh, being immune from, from poisons. Okay, Remember Paul got bit by the snake, shook it off, one of the most poisonous snakes at the time, and he was totally healed, right? Okay, so this is all part of that teaching. So watch this. He that dwells in the shelter of the Most High will remain secure and rest in the shadow of the Almighty whose power no enemy can withstand. Oh, my. Woo! Glory to God. You ought to, you ought to just, man, write this. Get a tattoo. The whole, nine, whole one. Psalm 91, man. Watch this. Next. That would be a pretty long one. Next verse. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in whom I will trust with great confidence and whom I rely. Just let it roll, Joshua, unless I start preaching. He will save you from the trap of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. Glory. He will cover you and completely protect you with his pinions. Remember I told you that before? That's what it means? That's a part of the directional wings of the eagle. And under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a wall. Think about that. We're covered. Well, things happen in my life, and blah, blah, blah. God is still good. You're alive. I said, you're here. If the devil wanted to kill you, he should have. If the devil wanted to take you out or could have took you out, he should have. You're still standing. You're still here. You may have a limp, <laughs> but you're here. You can still swing. Is anybody? Come on. He didn't promise you a rose garden. He protect you, though. Next verse. You will not be afraid of the terror of night nor the arrow that flies by day. 
nor the pestilence that uh, stalks in darkness, nor the destruction, the sudden death that lays waste at noon. These are great promises. A thousand shall fall at your side, and then ten thousand uh, at your right hand, but danger will not come near you. Lord, thank you. I trust you. You will only be a spectator as you look on with your eyes and witness the divine repayment of the wicked as you watch safely from the shelter of the Most High. I could just see that. Uh, don't you? Just right over the Lord's shoulder. <laughs> you can't get me. Come on now, right? We have to look at this as children, don't we? Someone said, well, that, again, that's prideful. No, a child will be like big daddy's here, man, big mama's here or whatever, right? All right, next verse. Hey, I know when my mom and dad showed up when I was in trouble, it was like, all right. Okay, because you made the Lord who's my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place. I could, I could just stop and preach and teach on this. There's some key things. You made him the dwelling place. See, it begins in verse 1, he who abides. You've got to stay there. That word abide actually means to be fixed. It's a set fixed like a cement position. So many people say, well, I, the Psalm 91 don't work for me. I had this go on this. Listen. It's telling you what you have to do. you got to abide there. I'm not getting out of his wings. Uh-uh, I'm not getting out of it. No evil will fall you, nor will any plague come near your tent or your trailer. For he will command his angels in regard to you. Did you see what that says? Angels are commanded to watch over you. Did you know that? Do you know that you will judge them for their actions of how they... I'm going to break this microphone, how they have ministered to you. That that knowledge is beyond. Man, we got angels. We got angels around us. They're watching over us. I'm telling you, every single day, set your angels to work. Some of y'all have unemployed angels. They're getting those little cherubim bellies because you're not. Work them. Send them out. War, every day, warring, ministering, guarding angels. I send them out. Warring, ministering, guarding angels every day. Every single day. I thank the Lord for my warring, ministering, guarding angels over me, my family, this ministry, everybody attached to us. Why? Because we need God's protection. And he has, guess what? He has an army. They're angels. They're your angels. Oh, we need to teach on angels. Because it, 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 it gets so messed up in the church. It's some type of fairy thing. It's not that. I will command his angels to regard you, to protect and defend and guard you in all of, how many ways? All your ways in obedience, uh, of obedience and service. So, so no matter where I am, no matter what we're doing, we have angels. Send them before you. Come on, you got a court case coming up. You got something you need done. Send angels before you. Let them move the paperwork around at the docket. Let you be the first. Come on, you don't think that happens? You don't think God can do that? Angels are supernatural beings. And the spirit realm is more real than this realm. So use them. Use them. Again, they're, they're, they're not charming little baby angels or whatever that stuff that people, you know, little Casper. These are mighty angels. Woo, glory to God. So, you know, even if you don't see them, they're there. He said it. God's not a liar. Right, come on, so we need to do it. All right, you see how, how they amplified? I love it. Uh, go ahead. I want. They will lift up. They will lift you up in their hands. Who? The angels. So that you do not strike your foot against a stone. Wow. You will tread upon the lion and the cobra. There you go. The young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. The King James says dragon. That's good enough for me. All them ugly things. Because he set his love on me. Look what he says here. He's quote, it's a quote. Because he set his love on me. There's a, again, there's so many things in Psalms 91 that has a prerequisite uh, or requirement of you. Right? Abide, stay, get in there, be in his presence, and then watch. Look what he says here. He set his love on me, meaning God. Therefore, I will save him. If I love God, he's going to save me. I will set him securely on high because he knows my name. You see that? The, 
the confident uh, he confidently trusts and relies on me knowing I will never abandon him no never <laughs> glory to God see it doesn't matter if it rains on your parade he's never going to leave you or forsake you the, the end time church is going to come to this realization of this intimate position they have with God it's going to be a phenomenal time in the coming days to where we're going to we're going to wake up to this reality that God really does love us we don't really don't have that yet no nope, we don't have that yet we know our names are written in the Lamb's book of life we know we're not going to go to hell we know God's for us not against us but we really don't have that intimate feeling of what he really thinks about us who I'm about to throw this mic down and go find a corner because it's more tremendous it's more great than I can articulate how many of y'all been in this presence and all you felt was his love man that's what I'm talking about it's going to sweep the church not this fake goosebump stuff this is going to be the love of God and he's going to show us that he has always been there for us and when that hits us the realization and revelation that God loves us We'll, we'll, we'll win the world. We'll turn the world upside down and, because we, we'll, we'll know that God truly loves us and he loves those that are lost. It, it'll be an amazing thing. I believe 2024 is going to be a powerful year for evangelism and world missions. But we'll see what the Lord tells me. All right, next verse. He will, uh, he will call upon me and I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble and I will rescue him and honor him. woo hoo Ah with long life I will satisfy him and I will let him see my salvation can somebody say amen so in that teaching we were talking about being immune from poisons being immune from the enemy of being immune from the trials and tribulations that the enemy would try to destroy us again I know when I first got saved the way everything was taught to me uh, you know, you, if you didn't go through any troubles, you were like this perfect Christian, and that's not true. In fact, to have troubles is to realize you're doing the right thing. <laughs> you know, because when you're saved, that bullseye goes here and it goes back here. And and so I, I recognize and realize over time that God is for me no matter what I'm going through. And because I do stub my toe, it doesn't mean he left me or I did anything wrong. That's just part of life. And there is an attack. There is an enemy who wants to kill, steal, and destroy. But the fact is that God delivers you out of it. Okay, so again, that's part of the end-time church that we're going to come to that revelation. And watch this. When you Perfect love does what? It casts away all fear. So when that love hits the church, again, not this sloppy love, this real, real tangible, true understanding of the agape love. When it hits the church, there will be no fear. There will be no fear. We won't care about the beast system. We're not going to care about the Euphrates drying up. We're not going to care about, come on, somebody, all these different things. Our focus will be on the king because it's already been written. I don't need to hear it repeated. Come on through television or a prophet or whatever and the church will rise up i'm prophesying to you the church will rise up and be that giant that that it, that she's supposed to be and it's going to be a giant of love and it's going to be the giant of power and we're not going to worry about things that are that are going to harm us okay so in that teaching let's go to second kings chapter 4 verse 38 i want you to see something this was an awesome cool story about Elisha and, and and maybe you've read it before maybe you haven't but going back to King James oh I'm sorry that's uh, 2 Kings chapter 4 verse 38 yeah and we'll go down just a little bit on this okay so check this out and Elisha came again to Gilgal and there was a dearth or a famine in the land and the sons of the prophet. Now, who were the sons of the prophets? Sons of the prophets basically uh, were a, a group of people who followed the prophet. 
they would we call them today spiritual sons and spiritual daughters that's really big in, in the new testament church that's fine but these were sons of the prophets and they would follow the prophets and they would repeat what they would say and the warnings and they would be like a mouthpiece for them and that they would also write down as a scribe the prophetic words of these prophets they were very loyal to the prophet they were very loyal to that man of god okay so they're hanging out right and they're sitting before him notice that they're sitting he's he's you know he's commanding their attention and he said unto his servant set on the great pot and steve the pottage for the sons of the prophet so go get a barbecue i like ben faircloth translation let's have a barbecue got all the brothers hanging out with it let's go eat isn't that pentecostal right there isn't that church <laughs> sit down let's go eat so they're gonna go eat right next verse and he went out into the field to a uh, one went out to the field to gather herbs and found a wild vine and gathered thereof wild gourds his lap full so he's kind of like came to our you know <laughs> our garden that's the way mark mark and abby look with all these buckets you know and they came and shred shred them into the pot of the pottage for they knew them not so they weren't familiar with these wild, how many all read this before it's a pretty cool story they 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 weren't really familiar with what this you know it was like the other day i had picking on mark but the other day he started picking stuff off a, tree, a, a bush and he's eating it and i'm like what in the world are you doing oh, it's blackberries man <laughs> i'm like maybe <laughs> You're more country than me because I'd be afraid I'd die or something. <laughs> they picking them over here too, by the way. All right. All, all I know is blackberries and snakes go together. So I don't, Miss Sarah, you know what I'm talking about? I don't mess with that stuff. If it ain't in a jar, forget it. All right, so check this out. Look what happened. So they didn't know. So they poured out for the men to eat. It came to pass as they were eating of the pot. It said they cried out and said, Oh, thou man of God, there's death in the pot. <laughs> Woo! And they could not eat thereof. Could you imagine? Pastor, <laughs> somebody's trying to kill us over here at church. <laughs> wow. How many of y'all ever had a dinner on the ground before? There was death in the pot. You're like, you know, <laughs> everybody everybody looks at the one thing and says, don't get that don't get that don't get that right there that's just pretty bad isn't it now you got to take in context elijah had just he had the miracle of the oil he had the shudamite woman who had a baby and then the kid died and then he rose him from the dead he just had some tremendous miracles going on now he's hanging out with the prophets he's like come on guys let's get something to eat and, then, and he almost kills them all that's a bad day of ministry isn't it that is a bad day forget dinners on the ground okay so they could not eat it there but check this next verse out and there's a there's 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 a, a, a type of christ in all this and i don't know how to get into all the teaching but he said then bring meal or bring flour this is talking about the humanity of christ and it's 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 jesus is all through the old testament we can pull him out in so many different places where bitter water is turned sweet it's turned natural turned normal all that is a reflection and a type and shadow towards christ but we're not going to get into that then bring me flour and he cast it into the pot how many of y'all know if there's poison i don't know if flour is going to do any good do you ladies uh, i don't yeah we better get some flour around here just in case but uh he cast it into the pot and he said pour out for the people that they may i wouldn't i'd just be like look i don't know dude <laughs> i don't think i want any more yeah, but watch there was no harm in the pot no harm in the pot what are we talking about earlier that part of the new testament church the end time church will be immune to poison there was a miracle done right here in other words what was meant for their harm and it, it was innocent became a miracle and god got all the glory out of it so what's going to happen in these end times when the devil tries to do what he's going to do or the plagues of the earth come upon the earth it's not designed to destroy us it's designed for God to make a miracle through us. My good, come on, somebody. 
I, I truly believe we don't have all the ins and outs of the book of Revelation, but I, I would just suggest this to you theologically that whenever the waters turn into blood or they're bitter, uh, why couldn't God take a church or a group of people and scoop up some of that water and bless it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost and somebody drink of it and be healed? Why couldn't that happen? Now, it's not written in there, but if it's the same character of God throughout the Bible, I highly believe that will happen. Is there anybody here? I don't have a chapter. I don't have a verse except for the whole Bible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, so these are the things we have to look at that God will provide and he will make a way. Okay? Next verse, because we're going to go down. I want, to see, I want you to see another miracle. And there came a man from Belshazzar and brought the man of God bread of his first fruits. That was the, that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to bring your first fruits to God. Twenty loaves of barley, full ears of corn, and the husks thereof. They were about to party down again, weren't they? They are definitely preachers. And he said, give unto the people that they may eat. This is talking about Elijah or Elisha. Next verse. And his servitor or his servant said, what sh should I set before this? There's a hundred men. You give us 20 loaves of bread. And he said again, give the people that they may eat. For thus saith the Lord, they shall eat and shall leave thereof. In other words, they're going to have leftovers. Do you all remember the story? There's another story like that, isn't there? Type and shadow of what? Of Jesus. Next verse. Man, he's all through the word of God. I love it. So they set it before them, and they did eat and left thereover according to the word of the Lord. Again, a tremendous miracle. How did it happen? Don't know. God did it. He took 20 loaves of bread, and he fed 100 men. Now, I don't know if you've fed men lately. We have two young men in our home. <laughs> They're good eaters. <laughs> They're <laughs> You're looking at Blake, too. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You don't you don't say do you want more you just say you know you know right but they're hard workers so so it was a miracle it was a miracle that God did that what is that an indication of it's an indication of, of provision I truly believe that look we we can we can prepare and put things away and have food for for time of famine and all those things but the greatest thing to put away in your heart is faith the word of God to take this scripture and say God if you did it for the hundred prophets you'll do it for us you're going to make a way you're going to do it I'm not afraid of the end times I'll do what I need to do and prepare but I'm going to tell you a lot of the things that are being said in the church are, are, are done out of hype and really it's out of fear and it's not true faith and that is our nature we're, we survive you know, we're survivalists in a way uh, it's human nature but we've got to learn how to be revivalists. We need to learn how to be people of faith and say, you know what, I will watch the ant and see what he does and prepares. That's what the Proverbs tells us to do. But I'm also going to see these miracles of God, and I'm not going to worry about it. It's going to be okay. Is that okay? And so I wanted you to see that story because I thought it was really, really cool. So now we're going to go into the fifth the fifth thing that we're talking about, we're talking about the five aspects, if you will, of the end time church is, uh, number five is to heal the sick. Heal the sick. Uh, we won't go back there, but, but Mark 16, 18, we've already talked about. That's a great commission. Go to Matthew 10, verse 1, and we'll go down there just a little bit. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. So heal the sick. Here's another thing. That, that I think we have a tremendous problem in the church is, again, we think that it is a specialist that can lay hands on the sick. No, you lay hands on the sick. Now, there are special anointings and special graces of God. There are certain people that walk in tremendous anointings for certain healings. There are people that are, uh, that are anointed and gifted to see cancers removed. There's people to see uh, the paralytic to, to rise up the lame. There are people who have tremendous uh, uh, anointings to see arthritis delivered. And then there's people who just, just pray for the sick, and God does certain miracles. 
Uh, we'd have to get into the teaching of the gifts for this to understand the veins of the Spirit of God. But the point is, in all purpose, in all of the Great Commission, in all of our lives, we are supposed to all, total, lay hands on the sick. Every single one of us, including yourself when you don't feel good, put your hand right there, baby. You know how many times I've done it? I couldn't have nobody's around me. I just I'll anoint that little palm and put that palm right there and say, be healed in Jesus' name. All right? Come on now. That's what you're supposed to do. Okay, so when he called to him his 12 disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to do what? Cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness. Now, to, to get into the depth of teaching, notice this. He gave him power for unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of diseases because sometimes there are demon powers who bring on the sickness. Not all sickness is from the devil, but all sickness is caused by the devil, by the fallen nature, fallen nature of man, sin, what have you, come into the world. But not everybody that, for an example, I will give you a great example, not everybody that has um, asthma is, is, is just, just having a breathing problem. There are people who have asthma who, who are, uh, ha have, have a demon of fear. A spirit of fear is on them. That's been proven in deliverance ministries. How do you know that? You only know it through deliverance. You only know it through d discernment. You only know it by when you pray. Is that a demon? Another is epilepsy, these type of things. Is that a demon power or is that something neurological? You get what I'm saying? And when you don't know, just pray and cast it out anyways. Is that all right? So, uh, again, I can't do the whole teaching on it tonight, but you, you cast them out and to heal all, how many manner? All manner of sickness and all manner of disease. So nothing's in, impossible for God. All right? So we're going to go down probably a couple more verses, probably verse 8, but go ahead, Joshua. The names of the 12 apostles were these first. Simon called Peter. Okay, go next verse. These are all the guys. All right, go on. Still doing it. These 12, Jesus sent forth and commanded them. He didn't ask them. He didn't suggest. He commanded them. Now you say, well, okay, that's the disciples. That's the apostles. What do they got to do with me? I'm a disciple. I'm, I'm apostolic. I'm part of the apostolic army, aren't you? I'm a part of the kingdom of God. That same, that same blood of the Lamb that was upon them for their salvation is upon you and I. We're born again. We're engrafted into the vine. That's my brothers you're talking about. Oh, Philip and them? You don't know my brother Philip? Oh, come on, man. Let me tell you about him. See, you have to do that. In fact, when I first got saved, I was so into that. I used to, I used to like, talk about Moses or whatever. I put, you know, that was my brother. I'm serious, man. That was my, that's my brother. Jesus is my elder brother, by the way, and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles into any city of the Samaritans, enter you not. So he commands them to do that. Verse 6. But rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 7 and 8. So he's giving them direction where to go, and as you go, preach. What do you do? Go and preach. Go and preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, next verse. Heal the sick. Now go back. Go back to verse 7. I'm trying not to rush this in. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. So we are warning people not only of the impending judgment, but we're also announcing the coming king and his kingdom, that all this is going to change. All of this is going to be in the, in the hands of Christ one day, that the, that the, that the curse will be lifted. So we're going to demonstrate to you, watch this, I'm going to demonstrate to you that, number one, Christ has risen, number two, he is alive, and number three, his kingdom is on this earth. Bam, be healed. Come out. Watch the power of God. Did you feel that? This and that. That is expressing the power and the majesty of Jesus Christ. So he, he says that this is what the kingdom is going to be like. Well, prove it to me. Next verse. As I go, I preach, heal the sick, boom, poof, cleanse the lepers, poof, raise the dead, poof. Is anybody here? 
Cast out devils. Freely you receive, freely you give. That's kingdom. That's what we're supposed to be doing, all of us. Not, not here, just me on a mission trip or whatever. You, you, you in your life. Oh, heal the sick, man. That's awesome. Go to Luke chapter 24, verse 49. We having fun? This is fun. Is it the Bible? And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon who? You, me. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till you be endued with power from on high. I could preach that message right there. He's going to send a promise. It's going to come upon me, but I got to wait for it. And when I do, I'm going to be endued from, with power from on high. That's where your power comes from. It comes from on high. The healing power of Jesus Christ is in your body right now. It's in your hands. Try it. Crank that thing up one day. Put some batteries in it and try it out. So at Walmart, Brother Ronnie, just lay hands on somebody. You know, I always tell people, they say, well, what if they don't get healed? What if they do? You'll just see the kingdom come. John 14, 12. John 14, 12. So we're, we're healing the sick. That's what the end time church is going to do. Well, aren't you worried about this disease, that disease? I'm not worried about it. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Oh, think about that for a minute. Wait a minute now. That's a heavy loaded scripture. We pass by that and say, oh, yeah, okay, that's nice, Pastor. Read it again. Verily, verily, or truly, truly, I say unto you, Who's you? Me. You're reading it, right? I mean, come on. If the Bible wasn't written for all of us, then why was it written? I mean, did he have to leave a line open to put your name in it? I mean, the, the Word of God is so alive. How many of y'all have ever read something and the Scripture pop out and say, That's me. That's, he's talking to me. Me, me, me. That's what I'm talking about. Put your name right there. He's talking to me. That's exactly, that's called revelation. Now, sometimes you read it, it's like, yeah, whatever. It doesn't really, you know, yeah, it's the word of God, but it does, it's not rhema. But man, when that rhema pops you inside your spirit, man, you're like, whoa. I say unto you, who? Benjamin Faircloth. He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do. There it is. So whatever he did, I can do also. Now, I, I know we're, we're, we're amening. But that means we can cast out devils. We can lay hands on the sick. We can see blinded eyes open. The dead can be raised. The lame can walk. The lepers can be cleansed. You just got to go do it. You just got to try it. I mean, every time somebody comes up to you that, doesn't, that has an illness or whatever, take that opportunity and say, can I just pray with you? I prayed with a lady the other day at the Walmart. I didn't know who she was. It was I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that more often. Just start praying with people. Come on, I'm going to get these batteries moving, man. You know, try it. You'll be surprised how people go, yeah, would you pray with me? Why? They're hurting. They're lost. They're lonely. Nobody gives a rip about them, especially in the service sector of life. Do you know how many waitresses you could have come to Christ if you just be nice besides give a good tip? That would be, first of all, nice. But then, you know, say, can I pray with you, Margaret, and whatever? Can, let, me, let me pray with you. Instead of being so busy in our world, you know what I mean, that we don't stop for a second and say, you know what, wait a minute, I have healing power in me. Try it. Try it. Try it. I dare you. He said it. You don't need my permission. God gave it to you. I don't have to lay hands on you to look like a, a pig at a county fair with you know, oil all over your forehead, you go do it. <laughs> I mean, I'll do it. I'll anoint you if you need that little kick in the grass. But, you know, that's, go do it, right? So the works that I do, you shall do also. And greater works than these shall you do because I go unto my Father. Why, why, the, why is there greater works? Give me five minutes. Why is there greater works? Because he said, I go to my Father. In other words, Jesus said it was expedient for him to leave. He was glad he left. The reason he was glad to leave is because now, watch this, now he could blanket the earth with his presence through the Holy Ghost. 
now he could feel all of them some people say well I'd love to have been around with the disciples I, you know I almost debate that I, I used to say it all the time yeah I would love to have been with Jesus but you know some I don't know if I want to fight the other 11 guys I don't know if I'd have to you know I don't know if I want to deal with Peter trying to hog him up all the time I wouldn't have understood and felt the power of his presence in me had he not rose from the dead and ascended to the Father and tag-teamed the Holy Ghost and he came down on the earth on the day of Pentecost. See, that's the only way to get saved. That's the only way to know Christ. So he multiplied himself by the, by, by the billions, if you will. See that? It is not one guy. It's not one denomination and TV guy. It's the church. I'm telling you, the church. when the church gets this revelation and it just goes, bam, I mean, we are going to be something to deal with. I'm telling you, quit building your bunker. Just know God's going to call you out of that bunker. There may be a season where he says, I'm going to, you know, get underneath there and I'm going to pass over and the storm's going to come. But you're going to have to come out of that bunker at some point. You might as well come out empowered. He said, because I go into the Father. So that was talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They, they didn't understand that. What do you mean? How, how do you do these works and you're going... Baptism of the Holy Spirit. Okay? Isn't that awesome? Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Let's look at that. We could probably quote that. But I'm going to go to five after. Is that all right? I, I'm just warning you now. So if you got to leave, it's okay. We'll flatten your tires. Watch this. I'm just kidding. <clears throat> Gosh, what kind of church is that? Just talking about love. Acts 1 8. Yeah, sorry. We could quote it, but let's look at it. But you shall receive who? You, me. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, the word power there, uh, most of you have been in church for a while, you know what it means. It means dynamite power. But it also means dynamo. In other words, a continuous building of power. The longer you stay in the presence of God, the longer you pray in the Holy Ghost, the longer you worship, the longer you study, the, the greater the energy, if you will, the presence, the Spirit of God. It begins to develop inside of you and begins to be released. Why do you think some of these great healing evangelists walked in such great power? They spent countless hours with God. Now, I understand we don't have countless hours. Roger that. I got it. We're in a microwave generation. We got to press a button. Doo -doo -doo -doo. I need it now. I understand that. And God understands that. But if we learn how to just spend time in quality with him, it won't have to be quantity because it will be intimate. It will be powerful, and God will recharge us. He'll use us. He'll send us out. Okay? So after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You shall be what? Witnesses. Everybody say, yay. Well, you know what that means? It means martyr. Sorry, but that's what that word means. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> right? But, but martyr doesn't have to be death. It means you die to yourself. Unto me, both in Jerusalem and all of Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. So notice this. You don't have a choice on whose color you minister to. You don't have any choice of, of zip code. You're going to go out into the world. So what? He's going to give you power. He's going to give me power. The end time church again is going to walk in that power we're going to walk in that authentic transparent power of god it is going to be so tremendous all of this plastic banana fake denominational cookie cutter uh, garbage church that we're involved in is going to get washed away in these final days and the army of god is going to rise up and the power and the, and the spirit of grace and the spirit of love. It's going to be a tremendous thing, and it's right around the corner. I said it's right around the corner in the totality of what God is doing. He's already doing it in churches around the world, but you're going to see it globally. All right, I got to stop right there because I got some more to give you, and I'll finish up number five. Is that okay? And that will be when I get back. So, uh, uh, by the way, on Wednesday coming up, there'll be uh, an encore presentation or something we're going to put up there. Is that okay? All right. Father, we love you. Thank you. Help us to walk in this reality and this truth. Uh, help us to just 
to focus again on the on the quality of our time with you and i pray that everybody watching listening father god that seed of excitement will begin to just give birth father god to a great move of your spirit we love you we're so looking forward to the end times not all the bad stuff we're looking forward to the glory in jesus name amen 